Hello dreamers! Today we're painting mushrooms. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this whimsical mushroom scenes with watercolors. So let's start. I used more than one reference photos for this painting because I want two different mushrooms and their details. I have a weak spot for whimsical mushrooms. There are these fly agarics growing along the side of the road where I live in Northwest Pacific area. I usually have to park my car, run out of my car, and take pictures while squeaking like a silly bird. They are indeed poisonous, but usually not deadly, so don't let your dogs eat them. My goal is to create a glowing mushroom where the gills light up like a lamp. Of course, there's no reference photos for this special feature. I had to manifest this light source from my imagination. Now that I'm done with masking my mushroom spots, I'm ready to lay down the backgrounds. In hope to keep my paper wet and moist longer, so that the pigment has more time to mingle and flow free and interact, I am wetting the back side of my painting first. And then flip it over and it will stick to the painting surface. And then I will wet the front. If you have experience with paper drying too fast before you are happy with the mixing process, have you thought about giving this technique a try? Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. The shadows of grass and the leaves in the background is the depth and a contrast to the lit up glowing mushrooms. Uh, to achieve these dark values, I did a lot of mixing with purple and burnt umber, as well as hooker green and maroon. Basically a party of dark valued um, complementary colors. to the Windsor Red from Windsor and Newton. I'm so impressed with the brilliance of the red color in this paint. It has no extra undertone, but just pure red color in its fullest saturation. Look how beautifully it spreads across the page.
here, I want to share a little about my experience with the logic of painting. When we look at the world, our brain makes sense of what we see. Yes, the leaves are green, and the barks are brown, and the shadows are dark. But the feeling we get from looking at beauty is not from the logical wiring of our brain, but from the emotional response to light and the color it reflects. That's why we do not paint the color we see, but the value. Value is the intensity of light and dark, or the lack of light. The trunk of the mushroom is supposed to be brown. Or is it? Or is it turquoise and maroon and purple? As a reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please hit or smack or click the like button. This will help more people to see this video and help the small channel like mine to grow. After lifting the masking, I'm adding shades to the white spots. Of course, the light reflected from the surrounding needs to be reflected on the mushroom. Whether it's blue of the night or the yellow of the glow. I paint often and update with videos like this on a regular basis. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified each time when I upload a new video. After experimenting with different techniques to create texture in the grassy area, I found the lifting technique to work best here. Once I use clean brushes to lift off the paint and create highlight in the grass, I can even use a different color to echo and balance the theme of the painting. Splash, touch up, and voila! 
Now watch this next video for more painting. Sip and cheer!